I'm Pete. I'm Stephanie, and this is The Cool Part Show. Hydraulic servo valves are a machine component that is widely used and has gone decades without changing much. But a company is looking at reimagining hydraulic servo valves, changing the way that they're made, making them lighter, more compact, more efficient, and longer lasting. Very new thinking about a very widely used machine component on this episode of The Cool Parts Show. Welcome to The Cool Parts Show. This is our show all about cool, interesting, unusual 3D printed parts. If you like what you see, uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and hit the bell icon to get notified about our new episodes. Today on the show, we're looking at how one company is reimagining hydraulic servo valves, figuring out how to use additive manufacturing to make them smaller, lighter, more compact, more efficient, all of those benefits that we talked about in the cold open. Um, we have two versions of the valve here. We have the complete valve and then a cutaway version. These were designed, manufactured by a company in the UK called Domen. Domen is a company founded on the promise of additive manufacturing for production. And when the company was founded, the team set out to find an industrial component or hardware item that could most fully leverage the benefits that additive can bring. And they knew they found what they were looking for when they hit on hydraulic servo valves. And if you have never before become excited about hydraulic servo valves, hang on, because you're about to. So what's a hydraulic servo valve? It is a device that uses fluid pressure, oil pressure to drive precise machine motions, linear motion for um, say a robot or a molding machine or um, a custom piece of equipment, say a cutting machine or a packaging machine. Hydraulic servo valves are used so broadly in so many different applications, it's actually hard to draw a tight circle around just where they're used, lots of places. And the design of hydraulic servo valves is stable, hasn't changed a lot in a long time. Here is Doman CEO, Marcus Pont, with more about hydraulic servo valves and why Doman knew this was the application they wanted to pursue. When Domin was founded, we started off with a vision to use metal 3D printing to change the world. And through deep research into the technology and the market, we discovered that hydraulics was the perfect place for 3D printing to bring innovation. High performance hydraulic servo valves are used to control power and motion. And we have been able to use metal 3D printing to make high performance servo valves that are in some instances up to a fifth of the size of our competitors, sometimes more than 300% faster than our competitors, use significantly less energy compared to some of our existing um, competitor products. Our valves are able to reduce the amount that you spend on operational energy each year within your system by up to $400 every year per every valve. Another reason was that the industry is huge. You know, it's an absolutely ginormous industry, um, twice the size of the aerospace industry. And the opportunity for change was huge. It's an incredibly inefficient industry. Oak Ridge National Laboratory did a research study a few years ago where they determined that on average, hydraulic systems are only 23% efficient. McKinsey did a similar study a year ago and discovered that in the EU, 15% of all energy is consumed by fluid pumps, which is just incredible sums. And that gave us the impetus to say, okay, hydraulics is the market. So Domen identified this application, hydraulic servo valves, as an opportunity for additive manufacturing because of the inefficiencies that they saw in the existing products on the market. They thought they could do better with 3D printing. But something I think is cool about this story is that they didn't start out by like looking at those uh, conventional legacy valves, looking for opportunities for like assembly consolidation and anything like that. They really took a blank slate approach. They started from the problem, like what do these hydraulic valves need to do, and then how can we use additive manufacturing to fulfill that need? What we've really done is gone right back to first principles. What is the right way to design this product by using metal 3D printing to solve a problem? We've been able to remove a lot of the compromises that exist in existing technology. Compromises that existed in the 1950s 
we've been able to miniaturize the whole thing. 3D printing has allowed us to throw out the existing designs of today and start completely from scratch. And when you design a product from scratch with all the modern tools we have around us, you know, advanced simulation software, advanced motor control, metal 3D printing, it's amazing how much more effective you can make the design. That full stack, that architectural approach to problem solving is one of the things that's allowed us to make valves and other systems so significantly smaller and faster than existed today. So starting from scratch and, and rethinking hydraulic valves from the ground up using additive manufacturing. And so that led to features like uh, these cavities for holding the hydraulic fluid in operation, these, these kind of organic shaped spacious cavities that make use of the volume of the valve. Like these, these galleries for oil are not simple geometric shapes like drilled holes, but instead very organic, somewhat reminiscent of say the, uh, a human heart. And more significantly, this spool which doesn't even look like a 3D printed part, but actually is very significant for getting to this compact form. This is a valve completely reimagined from the starting point that 3D printing is now available as the production process. So Doman valves have a lot of differences compared to conventional hydraulic servo valves. The manifold has a much more organic shape, more like a human heart, like you said earlier, and they're much more compact, in part because of this spool. In a more conventional valve, the spool, this part that's moving through the valve, opening and closing the hydraulic ports, would be driven with a linear drive, but in the Doman valve, it is a rotary drive, and it's because of a very special 3D printed feature that is included in this part. Do you want to talk about that? Right, happy to. Uh, so you mentioned um, the, the, this valve is, is more lightweight, more compact. This spool plays a big role in getting to that. Here it is, separate from the valve, and it looks rigid. Uh, it's not, I'll get to that in a second, but its purpose is to move precisely back and forth and open and close these fluid ports. And it's driven by this rotary motor that locates very close to it. And what you would expect is the crank of the rotary motor buckles that spool in and out just slightly so that it can't precisely seal those holes. And so to deal with that, Otherwise, you would expect the design to have uh, a linkage that um, takes care of that rotary effect or uh, a linear motor in place of a rotary motor. But instead, this 3D printed part accommodates for that um, flexure from the crank with this little give, like this little subtle flexibility built into a solid one piece part. So Doman is now in production with these valves. They're making a variety of sizes and configurations depending on the application. They're 3D printing those primary components like the manifold and the spool. Um, and all of those 3D printed components are being made from miraging steel using laser powder bed fusion. Doman has a couple of different 3D printing platforms that they use. Um, they started off with an EOS M290 that's still in use. It's a single laser machine. And then as they've scaled up and looked to add capacity, they've also added two Renishaw 500 Q machines. Each of those printers has four lasers each, and they're also equipped with something called Tempus. This is a technology that synchronizes the motion of the recoder blade and the laser so that the laser can actually be sort of like following along behind the recoder and drawing the next layer um, as material is being spread across the build plate. We actually have a whole other video about Tempus if you're interested. We'll put the link to that in the description. But between those three machines, Domin is making thousands of these components a year. Domin's now in a world of of volume manufacturing. And what that means is we are printing 24 seven. We have three machines that are printing all the time. We have a variety of different valve sizes and our batch size ranges from 12 valves on a build platform through to 20, 30. And depending on the components, sometimes we're printing 300, 400 components on a single build platform. There was actually two big arenas of innovation that the Doman team has progressed through. One is 
Uh, reconceiving the valve completely for additive manufacturing, changing the design utterly because of what additive can do. And then, once they got to that, it was developing and establishing a production process. Repeatable, reliable, everyday, cost-effective, using additive manufacturing, using laser powder bed fusion. And actually, the laser powder bed fusion was not the difficult part of that. That was straightforward. Uh, the more challenging process engineering steps that Doman encountered related to the steps that come after that, the post-processing. Is it better to machine support structure or solid material? How do we do that repeatedly? How do we ensure that the surfaces that matter are the right dimension, but the surfaces that don't matter, we don't get distracted by. How do we ensure that the powders were moved properly? Those were the real challenges we faced. So typically, post-processing for Domin looks like printing, powder removal, where we've designed a bespoke powder removal rig. We would then remove parts from the platform. We would heat treat, there'd be a sandblasting process. And then depending on the exact component, we would be maybe milling the components using a turning machine to turn diameters. We then have high precision finishing, such as cylindrical grinding. We also use a honing process. Uh, and then we occasionally as well use some wire EDM machines for hard to reach manufacturing processes. So they have succeeded at developing a workflow that works for them. They are in production. They're making a number of uh, valves that can be purchased off the shelf. They also make some custom components as well. And the business is doing well. They're expecting to continue to grow. Here's Marcus one more time. We're a really fast growing company. We have almost doubled in size in the last 15 months, 18 months. And our revenue is growing on average 75% year on year, every year for the past five years. So our manufacturing demands are increasing at the same level. We've invested in two new machines in the past probably 12 months, maybe 18 months. We see expansion of new machinery in our factory, particularly focused on post-processing. And there's just a huge sense of opportunity and excitement around the company of all the things that we can be doing. All right, that was a lot. Let's try to summarize this. All right, these are hydraulic servo valves manufactured by Domin in the UK. This was kind of a blank slate development process to uh, reconceive these valves. The key components, including the manifold and the spool, are 3D printed using miraging steel with laser powder bed fusion. And so the result is just a completely reconceived hydraulic servo valve with additive enabled features like these organic fluid galleries for containing the hydraulic fluid and this flexible member that achieves linear motion from a rotary motor within a compact housing in addition to just a, a fundamentally simpler design, fewer uh, joins, fewer fasteners. Doman is in 24-7 production with this valve, other valves like it through additive manufacturing. Three laser powder bed fusion machines now, more to come, all in service of an application that CEO Marcus Pont describes as a ginormous industry. That's it for this episode of The Cool Part Show, but Doman has done some other reimagining beyond this piece of hardware. They've also done a lot of rethinking of how to build and grow a business based on additive manufacturing. So Marcus shared some additional thoughts in an exclusive extra clip that we have over on the blog post for this episode that you'll find at additivemanufacturing.media. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. And if you are working on a ginormous application of additive manufacturing, however you define that, we'd like to hear about it. Cool parts at additivemanufacturing.media. Thanks for watching.